Hey, welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith with it's the interview series presented by WFPK at WFPK.org Consequence and the Consequence Podcast Network. Thanks as always for making your way here, for checking out the series. Of course, you know what to do. If you like what you see, what you hear, hit that subscribe button. I put out three new interviews every single week. So it's a great way to keep up with your favorite artists. And I'm so excited to have him back once again, Stone Gossard. Hello, sir. Hi, Kyle. How are you, man? Nice to see you. You too. There is a there's a new Pearl Jam record finally in our yep. midst with uh, with Dark Matter, um, and and I, I you know it's I don't know what to say at this point because I compliment you so often on the projects that you're a part of whether it's Painted Shield or Brad but especially this record I there is not a Pearl Jam record that I don't love but I absolutely love this record there is something special going on here congratulations on this one thank you. Thank you. It, it feels that way. Uh, it's sometimes it's incremental, the sort of uh, steps you can take. And sometimes you get a little bit more movement, you know, a little bit more shifting in terms of uh, just uh, making it fresh again and, and making sure that it seems uh, uh, it's just feels energized. You know, it feels like there's good energy, good vibrations going. Yeah. Well, it's apparently connecting. I mean, what did I read? Uh uh, you got a number one single out of it on the rock and alternative charts, which uh, I guess hasn't officially happened since given to flies. So, and there was a lot about, there's something about this record. I started thinking, um, in, in my unofficial fan trilogy that has now become because it, it, like yield and backspacer and now dark matter all have this brightness to them more so than I think any of the other records There's something about brightness on, but this record has that too. There is a brightness to this record. Yeah is do you know like am i is that really there is that my well perception? i guess first of all tell me what you mean by brightness because i guess that's you know it's a happier record even though the lyrics i'm not okay. saying are always happy it feels like a happier record that energy that you're talking about yeah um i don't think it's i don't think it's i, I think there is some joy in the uh abandonment of the playing and and sort of the and some of the confidence of just playing a simple song and just fucking knowing that you could just pound it out and, and knowing that you can do it and knowing that it makes you feel good. And I think that there's some of that, I think in a lot of ways, it's, um, I just think it's a, it's an open record. It's, it's open to the gravity and the sadness of the world, but it also infuses it with like, we're going to dance to, yeah. you know, or something like yeah. that. No, it's there. The dancing is there and it came together. I mean, when you all talk about it coming together quick, like what exactly does that mean? Because I was laughing because the last time you and I talked, and I think I talked with Jeff not long afterwards, both of you, now I look back and I see that you're being a little coy, like, oh, you know, the record, we're working on it. You know, there's that whole dance that uh, I think you all have to do. But like, when you talk about this record coming together quick, what does that mean? Um, I think in this particular record, uh, and particularly compared to Gigaton, um, and I've, I've said this before, but I think Gigaton was a record where individually all of us wrote a bunch of songs and we sort of brought those songs and the kind of the raw demo forms ended up being sort of built upon. And in a sense, that was fun and exciting because the nature, the very essence of what you first were excited about when you wrote the song stayed with that track. And it sort of we built around that. But it's also a little bit of a layered and it's a little bit of an insular uh, sort of approach to playing because everyone is sitting with your song in a room with an engineer as opposed to um, interacting with it in its formation. So these songs were all interacted with a lot in their formation, meaning that if somebody had a riff, they're bringing it in and immediately we need a bridge. That second verse goes too long. We got to do this. You know, this chord is bugging me. How do, how do we get from that chord to the next chord without having all that other stuff in there that doesn't matter? I don't, you know, those sorts of ideas, you know, with Ed, you know, and his perspective in terms of like where he's hearing a melody and how he could, you know, kind of get through a part and sort of make it work. Um, and Andrew, in terms of his, you know, passion for the band and love for, you know, sort of him falling in love with the band and being very excited about specific things about the band that he wanted to make sure that he, he, he helped capture, you know, like that he helped bring out our, our personalities that sometimes were forward and sometimes weren't was trying to get all of our personalities and our, and our energies, you know, coming forward. Um, and then all of us just with our opinions. So everything got worked over very quick. you had to have very tough skin 
And um, but what we what we discovered again, and this is very similar to how we wrote early on, is you know bring a riff in, and you kind of got to play around with it in the room. And the nature of that is somebody's going to screw up and do something that's not that, and everyone's going to go, "Ooh, that's cool too." What's that? So why maybe we need some of that, whatever that just was. So it's that melting pot of like you know throwing yourself into the fray and not being in control in terms of your song and then knowing that something magical can happen and that's sort of reaffirms our you know our formative belief that you know being in a band has a special magic to it and it's hard you know and as you get older and more successful and sort of you can do whatever you want to do it's harder to throw yourself back into that because it can be scary and it can be sort of you you have to trust your you know your bandmates to lift you up you know so that that that's that'd be what i'd say yeah having someone like andrew who also shares a little bit in the songwriting to some degree i guess and then josh as well like does that change the makeup of the band is it is it harder to find your space in a song when now there's that many cooks I, I think that I I personally and I think everyone would probably same say the same thing is I feel like kind of louder on this record than I've been, you know, in a while or particular parts that I thought were exciting sort of have moved, you know, mm -hmm. in mixes, you can kind of get there's lots of ways to hear songs and the mix is one of the most that's a massive artistic choice you're making, you're making a lot of big choices there. So I felt you know, more appreciated and more heard by Andrew in terms of my, the subtle things that I do, not necessarily just like, okay, here's a riff and do you like it? But more like, I keep hearing a note here and here, and I'm not sure what notes they should be, but I keep wanting to go to this or this, or maybe it's a wah thing or, you know, somebody who helped me navigate that. And I think he did that with everyone was able to make everybody sound great. Honestly, Mike's playing more leads than ever before, you know, like, out there sort of aggressive very you know off the cuff he didn't play anything none of that stuff was worked over you know all of it was done very quickly two or three takes but andrew is a master at how to take those two or three takes and really bring out the sort of essence and uh it's an imperfect process and andrew's imperfect but he did a great job of pushing us along a path that we hadn't been pushed in a while, I think. So it sounds fresh. Yeah. yeah it's interesting about the solos, you know, so much of the spotlight gets put on uh, like, like you and Jeff's relationship because it goes back so far, but with you and Mike, especially when you have that, you know, such a focus on the solos and stuff like that, like how has your relationship changed and, and maybe specifically on this record, you know, it's not like we ever see the two of you all playing back to back you and Mike. <laughs> What do you mean playing back to? Oh, uh, in, like on the stage, like kind of like, yeah. It's kind of, and I, see, here's the thing about back to back is you have to be able to play your part and maneuver yourself. Okay. And I'm always the guy that looks like if he fucking tries this, he's going to fuck up his. So being as shitty as I am in terms of my, you know, in terms of that particular quality, that would, uh, that would preclude me from trying to do back to back with him we will but i'll fall over and then we'll laugh and the song will <laughs> stop but but you and mike like you know pander is putting more emphasis on the big solos for him like d did that mean the same thing for you I, like i said i felt the things that i'm excited about in terms of making a record it's not, it's not that they're different than Mike. So I'm thinking about arrangements. I'm thinking about the, you know, whether or not, uh, what's the vocal melody? How does the vocal melody fit against the rhythm of the, you know, the guitar? What needs to go away? What needs to come back? Like, I love those kinds of, uh, I'm an arranger, you know, more than anything. So, and um, as a player, I just, I felt like my, the parts that I cared about were forward as though they were solos, you know, to me, they're solos. It's like, if I can hear me and this sort of melody that I created with this, you know, one note that might be in the key, but might not be in the key, but you kind of get used to it. And it turns out that it, you know, there's something about that. That's, that's, those are the kinds of things that I get excited about. So in the same way that, you know, and I think both of us, Mike is an excellent songwriter and an excellent soloist. And I can play a solo 
and look forward to doing more sort of I need to that's that's that would be good for me to sort of expand my range into that and be more uh comfortable uh improvising in the in the same way that Mike is but um so maybe that's the next record <laughs> maybe that's the next record. you hear it first there's gonna be another record <laughs> um no that's that's the thing there's I've always loved your guitar playing because your riffs as you say do come off like solos i can sing along to your riffs you know thinking about like yeah. even the 10 stuff but of course like satan's bed it's that's one of my favorites you know that yeah. uh that's ever come, that, those type of things and the, the like the record it starts out with you right like scared of fear is that that's yep. yours yeah yep. yeah like what, there riffs of mine in there in different songs you know but it's whether it's a formative riff or a, a addition you know and so that's a very that's a very stone that would that song was written in the first literally one hour of being in the studio with Andrew. And we just I had those two, you know, I had those basically three parts. We rearranged them completely from what they were to start out with in terms of like the number of times each one repeats and sort of where the what what was a B section turned into basically the bridge, you know, so it was ripped open. Its heart was pulled out and within an hour, you know, and now I listen to it and I go, well, that's the way it should have gone. Yeah. You know, it, it doesn't it doesn't feel like it's wrong. It feels like it's right. Right. So I, I guess, you know, in, in the past, we could look at the, you know, the, uh, the the liner notes and be like, oh, that's a stone song, you know, thin air. That's a stone song or whatever. Like, are there stone songs on this album in the same way then? <laughs> Yeah, that that's one of them for sure. Uh, Upper hand is sort of you know a song that I kind of brought in the kind of the main parts. But again, the, you that know, song's a journey. Upper hands. Yeah, yeah, and it and it, it became more of a journey in terms of we built it. You know, we built the the nuts of it were the you know the sort of the 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 guts of the song but the outro and the intro were sort of you know expanding on the, where you could go and and us kind of experimenting a little bit and trying to like get it to do a full something right um the, what's the end of uh the song won't tell um it really sounds like either maybe it's by accident but i thought this sounds like a cure send up like a little God, we, tip i mean we we reference the cure a lot while making it you know because of their again them and their style they teach you the power of the simplest little melody that has a unique you know lyrical quality it just if it feels like it's a voice if it feels like it's a has a lyric almost um and certain melodies the way they lay over the riff they just they sing and finding those things is like magic and you don't have to be a you don't have to be a musician to find those things, you know, and that's that's the magic we discover is just like, oh, this I mean, it sounds you could be the greatest guitar player in the world, but you could, you know, a, a 10 year old could learn how to play that in an hour, Um, you know, in terms of. In terms of just the physical, just it's just back this note, this note, this note, and then this note, you know, that's it, you know, like and everyone would play it differently. But that that's the that sums up the why I love music playing music is that the discovery that you can do it falling down, you know? Right. I've got a 16 year old and I walk in and, you know, there's the electric in his hand, there's the acoustic in his hand and I'm yeah. hearing plucking away. And, and I just yeah, want to yeah. go, I, I, half the time I just want to go, that's a song. Not yeah, like yeah, that's yeah. a song I've oh, heard before. God. It's just like, you've got a song right there. Yeah. And it's, that's, that's the, that's the nature of being an editor is knowing that when you hear somebody and half the time, they're not even aware of it. Half mm -hmm. the time, they're not even aware that what, they were just going from one thing and then they just hit a chord, but then they were going to play something else. But in that moment of their transition, that little, you know, they, you know, and, and that's what I, that's what I live for is those, like those stumbles into, you know, uh, the sublime, you know? Yeah. Why it, it, those moments are it, from the, it was like, a, you know, you've got the beautiful outro of like waiting for Stevie. I mean, running is such a fun song. Um, wreckage. Wreckage sounds like wreckage sounds like a song that we're still going to be hearing as a hit song on the radio 20 years from now. Yeah. You know, where, where did that one come from? Hey. Um, that was, a, you know, Andrew and, and Ed sitting down and just just playing with a couple of acoustic guitars, you know. And um, and we built that that thing, you know, 
I think Ed had a melody and a and an idea going, and it was you know it was it was time for a different mood. You know, we had hit three or four or five heavy kind of you know we'd already done that, and we were looking for um, sort of another gear. And I think you know Ed had that going on, and we just uh, and it came pretty pretty late. I think I think it was the second session um, at Shangri La, and. Um, yeah, uh, and and that song keeps revealing itself to me. You know, I it, it was a slow burn in terms of my understanding of that song, but um, it's 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 turned into one of my favorites now. And um, yeah, that's where, I, and that's also one where it's like I've got some little trinkly kind of parts on it that Andrew always said that's like a cure thing. It's like I was playing like a little picking pattern that just bells in, and you almost can't even hear it, but it's just sort of it's just kind of bubbling in there. And um, he really fell in love with that. It was a definite cure reference where he was like, that's cure. But I, I just love that, 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 you know, that just everybody bringing their box of their favorite sort of, you know, artist into the studio, it just makes for this mix. It's like, it has references, but it's not, it doesn't feel like it's, um, you know, it doesn't feel like it's uh, too, uh, too close. Yeah, it's not a Cure tribute album by no. any means. <laughs> <laughs> but won't tell is like I mean it's it's just it, and it references you too. I mean it's you know they're our heroes. You know I mean that mm -hmm. band is they showed everybody they show everybody something about songwriting and that simplicity of melody and and rhythm um, and lyric. So, um, but that's one that yeah that's a that's a like a Jeff Amon song that he kind of he just came in and he had a he had a dream about this lyric that it came to him and this sort of this melody and he and he played it for us and we got this and he had a demo and and again we just flipped it on its head and tried different things and Ed was took the lyric and tweaked it and made it all you know filtered it through his own filter and it just magic again letting go like letting your art get <laughs> destroyed by your bandmates works out. Letting your art get destroyed. Uh, did you see you? Did you catch any of the Sphere shows for you two? I didn't. Oh, I, I had to pass it up too. I had two chances yeah. to go out there, and I don't know why I kept missing it. But uh, man, I, I was that interested in it. Honestly, I, I everyone you know Jeff and Ed both saw and thought it was amazing, and you know I'm sure it, it was amazing. Um. Uh, that that immersiveness and sort of like what you could do with if a visual is all around with music and with you know i'm interested to see where that building goes and how it gets used in the future i think there's going to be somebody who takes that building and does something you know more transcendent i want to see you two on stage i just mm -hmm. you know, i want to just hear there i want to hear more stripped down not more strapped in well and plus I love what Bono does with a catwalk. And I, I don't mean that in a corny way. I mean, like, you know, the catwalk can be a little bit popish, but he really does use that to the, like my, my favorite YouTube moments are when he and the edge are out there, you yeah. know, and uh, until the end of the world, that's uh, like, uh, Oh my like, God. Better song than that. That might be my all time favorite YouTube song. That's uh, it's, I love that song. Yeah. That would, um, would, would you uh, ever want to play this fear? No, God, I, I personally, as soon as people started talking about my side, please don't, don't ask me. <laughs> um, you know, it's, I, I hear it's, there's some work involved. I hear it's, you, you got to really get the in-ears working just right for you to hear yourself. And it's, it's not a musical, uh, I'm sure you two sounded amazing in there and I'm sure they, you know, and I'm sure they spent months and, you know, making it work, but that's not one of those clubs where you step in and hey, it sounds good in here right now. It's like, fuck it. I'm pulling up from this. This is great. Or like cameras on you, but it's also on this giant grouper fish that they've got, you know, sort of imaged over the top of you. And mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. And for the uh, spontaneity of a Pearl Jam show, I guess you kind of just, that goes out the window. Like you can't really do pull it off. Right. Um, well, I want to ask really quickly about what's up for Loose Groove this year, too, because. I mean, what we're getting another painted shield first? Is that is that right? Yeah, painted shield's got a record coming out in a, in a few weeks, and um, I think, and uh, Brittany Davis, Image Issues, 
doing really well. Britney's band is amazing. So great. Wait till you see them. They're going to blow you away. Um, and Tiger Cubs. I've mm -hmm. uh, been on tour with uh, Porno for Pyros. They're playing great. They're in the middle of a, another musical project right now, making some more music to release soon. And um, so lots going on. So fun. Yeah, it used to be we'd get one of your like we get a Brad album on the on the off years of a Pearl Jam record or something like that. And that's just like thrown out the window at this point, like Pearl Jam painted chilled. Let's do it all at once. And Brittany, I mean, she's doing double time, too, I guess. So, oh you my. Know, it's... So, yeah, it's it's all just about keeping things moving along and doing things in smaller increments and just still not, you know, uh, siloing everything so much and just kind of I mean, I'm I'm. I like to be busy with projects and I'm fascinated by sort of those projects and collaboration and sort of what, what excites me to kind of go, I'll show up at the studio and like be involved in whatever, you know, I'll help pay for this record because I love this band or I'll help, you know, be involved in this because it's, 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 it makes me feel like it's something worth pursuing. I'm compelled. So I just keep doing that basically. Yeah. Well, you've had a good track record of it. I mean, uh, Loose Groove, the stuff, I was thinking even all the way back to those beginnings and just how much of that stuff I still listen to, you know. Um, I know I've referenced the Chicago Cab soundtrack in here before, but that's a great go-to for some of the classic stuff. And uh, and what the other, I like classic stuff. Last time we talked, you had mentioned that you were thinking about, you were planning maybe about doing the reissues for uh, Interiors and Bayleaf. Is that still, do you have that game plan? list but it's uh, we're, we're not there it won't be this year but mm. we're, we're going to definitely do more vinyl i mean that's going to be part of what we want to do is sort of do reissues limited reissues of stuff that people connected with back in the day and um sort of redo those so yeah been looking forward to that of course i'm looking forward to the shows this year uh with pearl jam um getting back to indie since i never got to see that one last year <laughs> But uh, but yeah, I mean, here you guys are. Another tour. You've got another chunk of songs to fit into a set list that just is dense with the greatest songs of all time. I That's feel really you. looking forward to it. We're like, we're thinking about kind of how we're going to do the show. And we've got some new production that's going to be cool. And there's there's lots of things going on. So um, we're, 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 we're excited about next steps. We're excited about making more music. We're I think this record was an energizing experience for everyone. It was a it was a little bit of a journey, but working with Andrew and just sort of uh, working with uh, just yeah, I think I think Andrew really made a, a difference by the nat his nat his natural nature as a producer and as a uh, as a fan, and um, it uh, I, it would be cool to do more. Yeah, I mean, theoretically speaking, you all could turn right around and, and punch out another record. I'm sure if you wanted to. I would love to do that. You know, I'd love to start something just to record for three days and just do some more songs because it was so spatty. You know, the the last one of the last songs we recorded was Dark Matter. And that was a that's a Matt Cameron song. So that that's another avenue of, of how we were writing. But Matt Cameron came in and just sat down to warm up on his drums and just started playing that drum beat, whatever that Dark Matter drum beat. And we were just everybody was just like looked at each other. and was like, that's so amazing how he just goes in there and sits and plays that. And we recorded it. While he was out there, he didn't realize it. And we asked him, "And can we make a little loop of this? And we all sort of took it home. And uh, Jeff and I ended up writing two different kinds of things to this loop. And the next day we all came in and we just took those two ideas. Mike had a bridge and we just took that beat and just laid those riffs across that beat. And then we just yeah. played it as a band. And, it, and that's what it turned into. And again, that, that, that song probably represents more than any other song sort of the act of building something together you know um but that showed us something about how we can you know having a matt cameron beat like that is something that we always dream of and we always want it and we're always encouraging and 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 we found a we found a road in you know uh, to some of that because you know we'll give you some writ we'll give you some chords they're easy you know give me a good beat if we have a great beat we're done the song's done you know what i mean that it's such it's all... a powerful song yeah have you seen the um there's a video uh justin from the band the darkness he yeah. he sort of deconstructs songs and he did the dark uh, he did uh dark matter have you watched that yeah, yeah. i watched it it's pretty good i was yeah. i was he's funny he's a funny guy and um he's real casual i love it his whole style is and I mean, the fact that he 
sit there with a guitar and like try to figure out something in real time it's pretty that's he's pretty good to be able to kind of do that i mean it's like one of those kind of players that can kind of figure anything out they know they're confident they're going to get to the heart of it you know yeah even if you quite get it <laughs> well, so I was wondering, like, you, you, for something that you all, you know, sort of just create and to have it so deconstructed in that way, like, yeah. I, I don't I don't know if that's just like funny, surreal or whatever, or if you actually get to find something that you didn't notice. Uh, he didn't find anything that I didn't notice. And his, you know, his, well, it's, you know, his whole breakdown of Andrew Watt. Why Andrew Watt's the guy you bring in when you're old? And, you know, it's like sort of, he's already doesn't even it's yeah he's putting the cart in front of the horse a little bit there i think but i just i was just amused and thrilled that you know i mean anytime the english like you you're just totally excited because <laughs> you know it's just i i don't know why i, I need their praise but it sure is fun when you get it <laughs> well i back, yeah. even if it's back in <laughs> i certainly love the magic that you all have made on this one with andrew with the group i mean there is uh there is nothing certain at this point that uh, any artist can continue this and the fact that you all do it really is completely mind blowing um congratulations it is always a pleasure to talk to you about this stuff really really nice to talk to you thank you so much and thanks to my guest also thanks to you for uh, for checking out the episode in the series before you get out of here hit that subscribe button again uh, you get three brand new interviews every single week new and every monday wednesday and friday at uh, right here on YouTube or, of course, anywhere in podcast land, including iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podchaser, NPR, or WFPK.org as well. A great way to keep up with your favorite artists and discover new ones as well. Then after that, actually head over to WFPK.org. That's where I do a show, Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern. It's an hour full of song premieres, music news, anniversary spins, bonus interviews, Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern at WFPK.org. Consequence has your music and film news. You can also find me on the social media spots, uh, Facebook, Instagram, mostly on Twitter. All three of them, the address is at Kyle Meredith. Do hope you like and follow along. That does it for another edition. I'm Kyle Meredith. I'll see you next time.